Hello everybody, Hyper Mario Sunshine here, and today it, we will be discussing 2024, it's finally here, we're a week into it, the year, and no games have come out quite yet, but we're here to discuss everything that could potentially happen in 2024, and all the games are coming out as well that I'm hyped for. We do have a bit of a preview, as you can see by the thumbnail, and basically our start to the video here. Why I think 2024 is going to be a pretty exciting year overall. And there's just a ton to look forward to if you're a fan of, you know, different kinds of games. And uh, as you can see, there is definitely a variety here that I'm going to be excited for. So let's get started on our list uh, of sorts. But yeah, we're going to be starting off with speculation first. We're going to take a little quick dive. And that is going to be the rumored Switch 2. Now, I know this style of video that I'm doing here is a bit weird. Uh, so, yeah, the Switch... Two. Uh, we've had the Switch for almost seven years now. In two months from now, as I'm recording this, will be seven years of the Nintendo Switch already, which is utterly insane. I remember getting this like after, like in junior year of high school, and uh, I bought it and I played with my friend Elixir and my sister as well. Uh, one, two, Switch, and then afterwards I was playing Breath of the Wild like crazy. And uh, the rumors have been ramping up that it's going to be just as powerful, if not a little bit more powerful than the PS4 and Xbox One, but also it's going to be having some sort of uh, DLSS, which allows it to run games and then look much better than they are supposed to. So basically making it look like some crazy resolution and allowing, despite the fact that it has much weaker hardware, it allows it to perform just as good as, let's say, a PS5, from what they're saying with the specs. And it is going to be a successor, kind of like the DS to 3DS or Game Boy to Game Boy Color situation. It's a pretty exciting uh, what we could potentially get. So a lot of Nintendo fans are going to experience potential cross-play from games that we they have yet to play on the PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, or even this generation as well. We could even get games like Street Fighter VI on the uh, Switch. Or even games like Guilty Gear Strive. Uh or Final Fantasy VII, uh, Rebirth. I'm not sure about Rebirth, but probably the remake, though. But, uh, yeah, I'm just naming a few games that we could potentially see. Uh, as for Nintendo themselves, what games they could have, obviously Metroid Prime 4, I hear people thinking that there might be a cross-play with it. Uh, obviously we could get some major title announcements dropped. Uh, you know, a brand new 3D Mario is always in, always in there. Uh, we did see it with the Switch 1, as we can see here as well. We got the Odyssey, uh, showed quite a little bit. And we could also get some tech demos as well, to show off. We could also see, uh, what makes it different, a little bit different. I've heard people wanting to bring back Street Pass, and I do as well. I wish Street Pass could return, because it, it does make the use of handheld a little bit more useful. You know, you could go walk around, and you have your friends to connect with. And I think it's a really solid idea to bring back Street Pass, and also just to have, like, uh, more things to do, uh, and hopefully make an actual, like, theme for the Switch menu this time, you know, really make this the Switch to make it feel like that a big upgrade, uh, on the console as well, game-wise, visually, uh, hopefully the, also the controls themselves with, like, the Joy-Cons, we get those fixed up as well. Uh, you know, just way better Joy-Cons. Uh, but yeah, I want to see some cross-play maybe, like, you know, P Switch 1 and Switch 2 releases at the same time. Uh, as for when it's rumored to be dropped, some people are saying it's going to drop on fall with reveals likely appearing uh, in April or May or even June. Like middle of the year, early, like mid early to mid middle of the year, uh, are some of the stuff I'm seeing. Uh, and yeah, I am really excited. This is definitely a system, and also recently Japanese analyst, uh, 
you know, business analysts have said that the pricing is likely around $400, uh, even saying that the games are likely going to be going up to $70. Uh, you know, obviously that is a, bit, a little bit disappointing because, you know, you have to spend an extra $10, but that's basically how games are nowadays. Uh, there's also the fact that the Switch... 2 is also going to be backwards compatible, so you could play Switch 1 games on there as well. So, a bit exciting as well. Uh, as for anything else I could potentially see on it, aside from 3D Mario Metro Prime 4 uh, as release games, I'm not sure if there will be, like, you know, a downgrade. Not like a downgrade, but, like, you could play uh, games on a visually huge upgrade, uh, kind of like Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom or... Uh, any Fire Emblem game, or Animal Crossing, New Horizons, etc. Or Xenob all, the Xenoblade Trilogy as well, if they get like a graphic overboost as well. I don't know about that. Uh, as for anything else new, I could see potentially some other launch titles as well. Maybe bring back an old series with a brand new game. Uh, I could also see... Uh, Something even completely new, kind of like arms in a way in the first few months of the game. But, uh, yeah, I don't really know what else they could potentially show. It's going to be very surprising what, few, what what games we could get, either third or first party. And uh, just to see, like, an overall overview trailer for the system, how it is. And I'd really like to see what, like, other capabilities it has outside of its games. Like, again, Street Pass, some other side thing to do. And, uh, yeah, hopefully some longer battery life, too. I mean, the OLED's already really good, but even longer battery life would, battery life would be even crazier. But, uh, yeah. We shall be moving on from speculation about the Switch 2, or Super Switch, whatever you like to call it for now, or speculation calling, or the NX2. Oh. But, uh, yeah, we're gonna be moving on to our first game that I'm excited about, and that is... Persona 3 Reload. Uh, I'm not. I, I've gotten Persona 3 and Persona 4 and Persona 5. I own them, but I never really got them off of my backlog. So I'm really excited for this game. I don't know when I'll get it though. I do want to try out, you know, Persona 4 Golden and Persona 5 uh, Royale. But again, a lot of my stuff. Again, I really uh, have a lot of backlog stuff to go through. A lot of games that I still that. I what been going through and still yet to finish but i'm really excited for this uh for friends more so than myself uh because they were really excited uh collect getting the uh limited edition bundle thing that comes with like an aegis figure or aegis figure however you like to say uh her name uh and like a whole bunch of other stuff i know uh i know a lot of the characters in it like mitsuru uh aegis uh makoto etc it's a pretty interesting game. I've always been wanting to get into Persona, but I never really found the chance. I do have uh, other Atlas games that I have that i also been meaning to play, like I sent Search for Megami Tensei 3 and 5, and also 4. I got 4 before the 3DS uh, eShop closed. Uh, also Tokyo Mirage Sessions for Fire Emblem. Uh, but yeah, I am. this is probably a little bit lower on my hype list, but uh, I am still very much excited for it. Uh, but yeah, let me know how you guys feel about Persona uh, 3 Reload. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about our next game here. Also a little bit on the uh, lower side of things, and that is Undernight in Birth 2. And uh, it's kind of like the... I'm, I don't want to like say it's like the weak, the weak tr of the Link of the Trio, but... Uh, I do like Undernight as a series, and I also do like the games as well. Arc Systems always make some really, really great games. And, uh... It's like the... It's like the weird child, like, you know, you have Kill the Gear, you have Blaze Blue, and then you have Undernight as that, like, that third... Uh... That third... Uh, I'm not saying it's bad, but, like, it's not bad at all. Trust me, it's that, it's all, it's amazing, but it's, like, always outshunned by the other two. But I'm really excited for this. I remember playing this a lot in high school, uh, the first game, with uh, some friends. And uh, I always love Arc Systems fighting games. They always know how to shine, no matter if it's the uh, 3D team that works on, like, Dragon Ball, or Guilty Gear Strive, slash Exard, 
uh, or if it's, uh, I believe they also worked on Grand Blue Fantasy and Va Fantasy, uh, Grand Blue Fantasy versus and Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising. But, uh, yeah, I'm really excited for this, and also I do own Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle as well in Central Fiction, so I am very excited for what the, uh, 2D team has in store. Uh, it does look really interesting, and again, I, I'm, I love fighting games in general, so I'm really excited for this. Uh, and obviously, it's gonna be having a lot of good stuff. Uh, good training mode, good rollback net, net code, hopefully, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, yeah, again, a little bit lower on my hype list. But, uh, yeah, we're going to be moving on to our first remake of sorts on, well, our second remake of sorts on this list. Uh, I guess before we get to, yeah, there's a new inbirths that are going to be coming as well, so, yeah, this is going to be, uh, pretty exciting. But, uh, yeah, we're going to be moving on to the next one on the list, and that is, none other than, Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. Now, the game, when it was first revealed, it was pretty, uh, like crazy that they're bringing this onto the Switch. Uh, I was not expecting this to be the first few of the 3DS games on here being brought over. I kind of, uh, I don't know, if, I never really expected 3DS games to be brought in already, but then again, Skyward Sword, which was a Wii game, was brought over to the uh, Switch remade. So I guess it's time for like, I guess some sort of 3DS games to get that so same sort of treatment. But uh, I am pretty excited for it. I do. I, I don't know, I haven't played Luigi's Mansion 2 in forever, like, uh, through the story, and, uh, I remember watching Chugger Conroy's Let's Play of it not too recently, and, uh, I felt like always giving a second chance, and, uh, I do have two, I've always wanted to Let's Play as well, especially with, uh, my new 3DS capture card, but now, uh, yeah, this does definitely make it a bit tricky for any future Let's Plays, like, do I do the original on the 3DS, or do I do the remake on the Switch? Uh, but right now it's looking better than it did in its uh, first trailer. Uh, definitely looked a little bit rough, but right now it definitely does look a bit better. It's definitely more so. It's like it still leaves that like 3ds art style of sorts, but it's definitely is still a lot more polished. And I wonder if they're gonna use Luigi's Mansion 2 as like a little base of sorts, uh, like use three and two, like you know, have you go through multiple mansions but not make it like mission based like it's still very much like a so a uh, sort of uh, adventure esque mode like you could go wherever and whenever at each time so you could do everything at like a different pace so like you could play uh, one mansion as your first one and then have uh, and then your friend could technically be in another mansion uh, doing their own like their own playthrough would be much different from yours because they decided to go to a different mansion first but that's just my opinion. I, mean, I don't know if they're actually going to do that. But yeah, I'm still pretty excited. I am likely going to be picking it up, but I don't know if I'm going to be... Like, if I were to Let's Play this in the future, I don't know if I would be doing the 3DS version or the uh, remake. So let me down below. Uh, that's definitely something in the cards. I'm not saying it's going to happen anytime soon. But yeah, just let me know what you guys would think. If I were to do Luigi's Mansion 2, should I do a remake or should I do the original? But, uh, yeah. Uh, still pretty excited. It's Luigi's Mansion. I love the series, so... Let's move on to yet another Nintendo remake that was announced uh, in the September Direct. And that is Mario vs. Donkey Kong. I remember when uh, Pioro was leaking this and... Uh, he said how the minis were in, and like I was very disappointed because I wanted a game kind of like the uh, 1994 Donkey Kong slash you know this one Mario vs Donkey Kong, like in that sort of style. But I didn't expect them to do a remake of the GBA one. Like I felt like if they were gonna do like a remake, they would do like the 94 remake. Like but he liked Donkey Kong's like you know current design instead of the older one. But uh, I still very much love Mario vs Donkey Kong. It's a very, very good game in general, and I've always, like, played it, but I've never beaten it. Uh, it was on my 3DS uh, through the Ambassador program, so uh, that's all my first experience of it, and it was really, really fun. And I honestly can't wait to try out the uh, remake. It is $50, it is a bit overpriced, but I feel like there's probably something that they haven't told us yet that'll make the price worth it. Maybe, like, a creation level, maybe, like, a... Uh, like, you know, you can make your own online, uh, creations, and, like, have friends play them, kind of like Mario Maker, 
Or I could also see, like, bonus levels uh, where it's, like, a lot harder. I don't know if it's going to be that 100% guaranteed, but I'm still pretty excited for it nonetheless. Especially with the, uh, with how good it looks, honestly. Uh, surprisingly, like, wow, just, like, the difference. And also the fact that there's two players, so maybe they'll have, like, some two-player exclusive levels uh, as well. But, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, and also, if they're they're potentially tr using this remake as, like, a setup for a new Mario vs. Donkey Kong game with, uh, like, the same gameplay style, but dip very much, uh, like, you know, new everything. Like, new story, how Donkey Kong, you know, decides to do something, you know, uh, not evil, but, like, more so, like, mischievous. But anyways, let's move on to a non-Nintendo game once again, and, a, and something I did kind of mention earlier, and that is Grand Blue Fantasy. But not Versus, but this time Relink. I've been wanting to try Grand Blue for a while, aside from Versus. Uh, I feel like this is a great way to do so. I love side games, works in general. Uh, especially, uh, like... Uh, Dr Dragalia Lost, I was a big fan of that, and I know that some of the characters from Grand Blue, not some, but like a couple characters here and there, do appear, and it does seem to be an action RPG filled with a lot of the Grand Blue cast. And it does look really good. Uh, I'm going to be getting this for my PS5, but hopefully I could get my PS5's HDMI port fixed soon enough. But it looks really, really promising. Inside Games looks like they're going all out with the Relink uh, team. I know Relink teams tend to, like, remake or, like, retell stories of the games in, like, much bigger aspects. Uh, so you struggle your lost Relink for the Switch 2? <laughs> Anyways, uh, but yeah, I'm really excited. This was a game my friend was really excited about. I only knew about Grand Blue Fantasy and also the, you know, they start off as a gotcha. But I'm really excited for this game. It looks absolutely gorgeous, and I always love, like, huge open-world JRPG games. Like, obviously, Xenoblade, Tales of... Uh, etc. I also just love JRPGs in general. Look at Fire Emblem, it's one of my favorite series. But yeah, I really want to try this game out. It looks really exciting. It looks definitely in my sort of uh, taste of games. And uh, yeah, I am overall just really excited. I can't wait to get this. Hopefully, I can get my PS5 Switch uh, fixed in time. Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited to try this out. Uh, it's going to be, I think, later on this month, or next or early next month. Uh, yeah, it is early next month. Oh, wow, for February 1st. So, yeah, we're like about four weeks away, I think. Like three, four weeks. But, uh, yeah, moving on. We're going back to that Nintendo Direct once again, because it's Princess Peach Showtime. So, uh, there's still not a lot about the game that we know quite yet. Uh, obviously, they do tell us the story in the, the trailer, and I'm re still really excited for it. I do like the uh, whole stage aspect of Peach switching clothes for different powers. It kind of made me feel like she was like a magic girl, kind of like Sailor Moon. Uh, and I just really like that Peach is finally getting a game again. It's her second game, and this one's her first one in, I believe, 15 or 16 years. Uh, I believe it's being made... but. but by the looks of it, it's being made by uh, the same devs who make the Luigi's Mansion and uh, Mario Strikers games, uh, next level games. But I might be wrong about this, but I don't know. There's just the way that she looks expressive, and also how, like, the, the game kind of also looks like a Luigi's Mansion game in a way. Like, just like how it's, like, like graphically, and also how Peach uh, plays. Like, you know, you see, like, her in a front perspective of sorts. And also, like, the little cut cutscenes in between kind of remind me a bit of Luigi's Mansion graphically. So, yeah, I'm really excited for this game, especially, like, you know, uh, what it could dip do differently compared to uh, other Mario games. And it does definitely look very promising. There is some aspects that do definitely feel a bit off, like some frame rate issues. But I feel like maybe they'll have that sorted out by the time it releases. But, uh, yeah, I'm really excited for this game. Uh, especially with, like, the different, like, gameplay aspects that we could go through with each costume, so, uh, I really can't wait for that. 
And uh, yeah, overall, just really exciting to see Peach have her own game back. I really can't wait to see uh, what other costumes they have aside from the ones we were initially shown. And uh, also, what boss fights we could potentially get, and like also, what's more in the story? What other what other Mario characters could we potentially see? And I also know there was a little bit of backlash. Also, Eva moment for thirty seven reference, but uh, uh, there was also a tiny bit of backlash with how. Uh, <clears throat> Peach's, uh, like, face changed in the, uh, cover art. Some people said it looks too Illuminations-like. But, uh, I mean, I'm okay with it, but nothing too over-exaggerating. I kind of wish that they did stick with the old style, but I very much like how Peach is a more angrier with her, uh, karate form, with her, like, outfit there. So... I definitely think that is a good change for that one, but her face on, like, the actual cover, I think, should just remain the same. I feel like that, the fighting one, was the only thing that they should have kept. Anyways, moving from Nintendo to Capcom. We got Apollo Justice getting his trilogy, finally. I know a lot of people have been begging for Apollo Justice to get, like, his own trilogy, much like Phoenix Wright. Uh, I got, about two years, three years ago, actually, I got into, into the Ace Attorney series, and I absolutely fell in love through with the uh, original trilogy. And then I afterwards, this was when the 3DS was still open. I wanted to get uh, the other two, the other three games. So I got Apollo Justice, I got uh, Dual Destinies, and I got uh, Spirit of Justice. And uh, actually, I might be wrong. Spirit of Justice might be another one. I don't know. Uh, I might be wrong, but yeah. Uh, I'm really excited to play this game, honestly. Uh, although, I don't know if I want to go through Apollo Justice again, and also the first game, the first case in uh, the second game in this trilogy here. Uh, I know that, uh, that you know, obviously, I would just have to go to the third one, but I also got the third one, so I didn't know that this was going to happen so soon. Uh, but, yeah... I uh, like I just really want to get because I love Ace Attorney and I also do want uh, to just go through the games again. But at the same time, I just recently played through Apollo Justice and it was a bit of a slug to be honest. Uh, but its first part part was obviously amazing. Uh, at least I could go through the second and third games because I only just went to the tutorial level. Uh, not tutorial level, the tutorial case, which is always the first one. But, yeah, I'm really excited. And also, Capcom recently mentioned that they've been hearing us wanting an uh, English port of the second Investigations game. I did get the first one on my phone, and it's really fun. Uh, maybe they'll do an Investigations collection, maybe? But I know that the Investigations games need a uh, touchscreen, which is uh, which is obviously seen with... Uh, that's only DS, and we only gotten it on iOS with the first one. I'm not sure if the second one is also on iOS, but, like, uh, only in, uh, Japan only, so maybe we'll get that finally translated. Uh, but yeah, and also, we also get some extras as well, like DLC-only stuff. For, oh yeah, I was right, Spirit of Justice. Okay, so yeah, I did get them. But I'm not sure, uh, if I do... Oh, yeah, the tiger outfit. Oh, my God. I just realized that. But, yeah. Uh, I'm really excited either way. Again, I don't know if I'm going to be playing the first game on the trilogy list, aka Apollo Justice, again. I'd rather much try to replay the first three games in the series than to replay Apollo Justice. But, uh, yeah. Overall, again, really excited. Can't wait to honestly just replay... Well, just play through the next two games... Uh, and honestly, like, just seeing all the characters in HD in a much similar fashion to how they look, uh, compared to their DS and 3DS counterparts, I'm just really excited to just go through the rest of the Ace Attorney series. And also, I did get the great Ace Attorney Chronicles as well, I still have yet to play through that too, because I, I wanted to go through Apollo Justice and also, uh, the other two games before I got to, uh, uh, the great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Uh, but yeah. All right, we're on our top three most hyped section now. These are games I'm definitely 100% getting. 
And hopefully I could get my PS5 fixed in time for this next one. Because it's Tekken 8. Uh, Tekken 8. Uh, I've recently gotten to Tekken series like about last year. Uh, I remember playing it a little bit earlier, but I haven't really gotten into it. I remember watching Tekken Bloodline. And it was honestly amazing. I kind of wish that they announced like a season 2 already. Because uh, I honestly thought season 1 was great. Especially without the English cast. Like I know a lot of people are more used to Tekken having, you know... Uh, depending on the ethnicity of the person, uh, well, the character, that we would get their, like, nationality, like, whoever the voice actor is to be voicing them. So if it's obviously Jin and Kazuya are voiced by Japanese men because, you know, they're from Japan and they're speaking Japanese only because they're Japanese citizens, or Kazuya was a Japanese citizen, but then you have someone like Paul, who is American and speaks English, and then you have, like, uh... Oh my god, you have like uh this one the new one of the new characters, I believe they love llamas a lot, and they're like from Spain and they speak Spanish, like it's like Spain Spanish. Because I know there's like differences between like Central and South American Spanish, like tiny little differences, but you know. Uh but yeah, I really I still really like Tekken Bloodline. Uh and I'm really excited to try out Tekken 8. I did get Tekken 7, but I never really downloaded and played it. I did play through a bit of Tekken 6 and some of the older Tekken games back then. But, uh... Oh, yeah, there she is right now. There she is right now. She's the one I'm over. And also, uh, I believe the Jackbots are also ru speak Russian. So... Yeah, I'm really excited. I really can't wait to try out the game. Uh, I heard that the netcode isn't the best. I know some people were disappointed. I remember seeing Maximilian dude discuss about it. Uh, and also some people online in general. But uh, I'm really excited also to try out the story because Tekken does have the longest running storyline uh, in a video game according to uh, Guinness Book of World Records and also Harada likes to mention it as well. But uh, I do want to see the conclusion of the story, obviously. But I also really want to see the gameplay as well. I did not... I, did, I tried getting into the demo, but I just didn't get a key. And uh, obviously the demo's out now, but I, my PS5 doesn't work. Uh, I did pre-order the game, though. Hopefully I can get my PS5 fixed in time. If not, I'm probably just going to wait till after it is done. So, yeah, after it's done being fixed. Next up, our last fighting game in this uh, list. And that is Rivals 2. Uh, I backed up the Kickstarter recently. and uh, Well, not recently, but like you know when it was still opened. And I'm really, really excited... This is a platform fighter that I absolutely love. I love the first one. Uh, everything from its characters, uh, its modes, and also the work, the creative workshop as well. I can't wait. I don't know if they're going to have like a the second one have that too, but I feel like it's going to be a long while until they get to that. But I was really, really happy to see that this game is getting a sequel in a much more uh, 3D fashion. Uh, definitely looks amazing compared to most other uh, 2D platform fighting games aside from Smash. Uh, it definitely also plays really well from what I'm seeing as well, like, with people trying it out, and, like, the fact that, I, like, Dan Forance and the team behind Rivals 2, I'm, I apologize if I pronounced Dan's name last name incorrectly, but, uh, I just really like how he has, like, a very good understanding of how Smash casually and competitively feels, like, as a game feels. And, uh, like, you know, like, with impacts, like, how the moves hit, how, like, how to make moves, like, actually feel effective and, like, satisfying to land. Because I, I know that was a problem with Multiverses and Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 1 and 2, like, where strong moves don't really feel as impactful and as, you know, strong as they should feel. And I feel like they get the, the Rivals 1 really gets it done right, and I feel like Rivals 2 is getting it done right, too. Just looking at how these moves hit and like the effects and uh, the impact as well. And also, it just looks amazing uh, for an indie uh, 2D platform fighter. I can't wait to try it out. Uh, again, I did back up. I believe I backed it up with like the $75 drop. Uh, and I can't wait. I did main Absa and Claren in the original. And I and also this allows like a more Smash feel because like I know that the... Uh, the 8-bit style, like, you know, the whole, uh, 
sprite-based stuff doesn't feel the same as, like, you know, a 3D S-Book, but I still really love Rivals 1. And uh, Rivals 2 is looking really, really good. And there's still some characters yet to be revealed, and obviously, like, some of the mechanics uh, returning and new are really cool. Uh, I can't wait to see what else this game has in store, uh, especially, like, any side modes. Uh, and also, yeah, they do have ledgers now, so anybody who was, like, a little bit turned off with the original but still really liked it, uh, like, you know, because there wasn't really any grabs, but now there is. Actually, was there grabs in the original? I don't know. I have to replay it again. I know I played it somewhat recently, but yeah, uh, I'm just really, really, uh, okay, honestly can't wait. I know it's coming out in November, so it's a little bit late into the next year. Well, this year, technically, 2024, but it's definitely looking really, really promising and definitely really fun. I hope that there's going to be some sort of, like, I know there's going to be some sort of beta, maybe, I don't know, because uh, I know there's an early release thing for uh, Rivals 2 on the uh, Kickstarter, well, when it was still opened. Obviously, those were for, like, really, really, really expensive uh, backers, and obviously, I did not have the money to do that, but it was still really, really fun. Uh, to watch people play. It made me really interested in the game. And I still want to see if... Uh, I know uh, Claren is likely going to be in uh, due to them announcing one of the, the returning fighters having a, a fire element on them. Uh, and I know that Absa's stage is also in the game or in the works. And also Claren's 3D model was shown in earlier trailers for the game. So, two of my mains are coming back. I can't wait to try them out in this game. Maybe I might fall in love. And also... The side modes as well really remind me a lot of Adventure Mode and also uh, a bit of how, uh, well, Adventure Mode for Melee, but also a bit of how Smash 4's, uh, like, I guess the boss fight with uh, Master Core, like, the, with, like, Master Forge or someone, I like, going through that whole thing, like, that's what it made me feel like a little bit, like, with little spikes and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, overall, this is my second most hyped game for 2024, and I'm really, really excited because I loved Rivals 1, and I cannot wait for Rivals 2 and see what uh, this game has in store for us. But anyways, my number one most hyped game in 2024, and I believe you guys already know what it is because I already made a discussion video about it, and I already discussed it. And I already am Let's Playing its sequel right now. I'm Let's Playing its sequel right now. And that is Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. And my cat got up when the the intro theme started playing. And I could just... I've been re-watching this trailer over and over again. And it's just like, how is this still real? Like, I'm... Like, we're in here in 2024. I'm, like, still thinking, how is this still real? And, by the way, we might already be a month away from a Nintendo Direct, like, it could be literally next month. Like, obviously, we already know there's always a February Direct, but I'm saying, like, it could literally be next month, like, the 7th of February. Now, obviously, I don't know if it is going to be the 7th of February, uh, 7th of February but there's always a, the chance that it could be. Now, I'm really excited for this game. You guys know I'm a huge Paper Mario fan. My first Let's Play was Paper Mario. I did Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door not sh uh, very shortly after, like about my fourth or fifth Let's Play. And the game looks so gorgeous. It looks even better than Oregon Kim. That's a game that I already consider like one of the best like Switch games uh, visually. And this game just looks absolutely amazing. Uh giving the characters a lot of new animations, like, you know, your, side, your partner characters, uh, to really make them more expressive. And also, just, like, a lot of the drops on the game as well, and just look really, really good. Uh, very updated. Even though, like, the, the, the original game still holds up really well, but, like, seeing this game getting remade is just still, like, they actually did it. Like, they really did. Now, I know there's always the possibility of some new stuff being uh, added in the game. Like, obviously, we saw that one Toad and Blitz Pit. Uh, we saw, uh, like, obviously, you know, back sprites here and there for characters that don't have back sprites or just reactions in general. 
And also, like, using the uh, Japanese thing for tech, like, you know, he has a red uh, color for his camera lens over the, uh, you know, the green that's in, or I believe it was blue. It was either green or blue in uh, America and in Europe. Uh, but yeah, I just really, really am excited for it. There's a lot of things I could talk about. Obviously, like, speculating, like, obviously, can we get, like, uh, some balancing to the party members? Could we get some new badges? Difficulty modes? I know some of these are, like, impossible or, like, you know, unlikely. Uh, some of the others could, are potentially likely, like, uh, for example, maybe some, po like, music. Like, you could change between the old and new game ones or, like, just, like, a sound test in general. Uh, obviously, like, some extra stuff, like, maybe, like, some rematches with boxes, uh, rematches with, like, bosses, aside from Rockhawk. Uh, another 100-pit trials I know people have been wanting as well. A Luigi's, like, Marvelous Compass, Paper Luigi and the Marvelous Compass as one as well. I don't know, there's just so many that they could potentially put. Uh, obviously they did play the original, uh, Paper Mario, uh, music in the beginning. So maybe we might have, like, a little, like, maybe they might actually fulfill what the original couldn't do. And that is, like, to bring all the 64 party members as, like, cameoing at some point. Or, like, even have us visit, like, to Toe Town in the original game, but, like, it's only open to there. I don't know, just so many things that they could potentially do with this remake. And, uh, yeah, Intelligent Systems was really working on this for a while. And, uh, I've heard that they like, a few years ago, that if, uh, fans really demand, like, wanted a remake of Thousand Year Door, that, you know, if enough fan demand was heard, they would do it, and they clearly did, especially with the re hashtag remastered Thousand Year Door, uh, by Arlo and Sugar Conroy, uh, like, a few years ago, I feel like that might have worked, honestly, because, like, uh, Kit and, uh, I believe Kit and Cat, or like, Crystal, or Cat and Crystal, uh, from back then uh, from like Nintendo Trios and I believe they have their own channel right now but uh they said that Nintendo does listen to their fans like it may seem like something that uh you know that seems impossible but yeah they do listen to their fans and uh this has me really excited really hopeful that uh that they're gonna use this as like a base for the next Paper Mario game kind of like how uh Arte Piazza uh could potentially be like our new devs for a Super Mario RPG sequel uh and or even like making uh Mario and Luigi games because they already have the the Super Super Mario RPG style down, and like some of the text and whatnot is from uh the more modern uh Mario and Luigi games like Dream Team and Bowser's Inside Story and uh, Paper Jam, like the text for like the damage for example is, and also like uh the moves as well is from those games like very similar. So I feel like they could also work on a Mario and Luigi game somewhere down the line so yeah this has me very hopeful for the future of mario rpgs and mario spinoffs in general this is my most excited game of 2024 i i'm honestly might already call it my game of the year because this is my like this goes back and forth with fire Emblem three houses my favorite game of all time and uh maybe replaying this maybe it might re-solidify itself as my favorite game because i had so many childhood memories of thousand year door and just seeing this being remade as something, like, I've always thought was impossible after, you know, the whole, you know, modern trilogy. I still love Origami King, by the way. I think it's, Origami King's a really good game. Even though it does have some flaws from the other two, I still think, I honestly do think it's still solid. But, yeah, I thought this was near impossible, yet it's actually happening. I still can't believe it's happening. Every time I just watch this trailer, I'm just, like, looking at every little detail and every place that you visit and again who knows i will say this i will definitely do this as a re-let's play along with uh along with uh the original paper mario like these two have to be in the works somewhere down the line but i won't say when like if i though i can't believe i just like confirmed like potentially three future let's plays but whatever uh so yeah this is honestly my most hyped game. I can't wait to see everybody back. I don't... I've heard people... Uh, but obviously, uh, I mentioned this earlier, but, like, people, like, saying, like, oh, this might also come out for the Switch 2 or a Switch successor or whatever because of the uh, button theory because, like, you know, they do the SNES colored buttons for each uh, one. Like, A is red and... Uh, 
I believe B was like yellow. Uh, but yeah, like, you know, a whole SNES button layout. And uh, yeah, I kind of, sort of ish, may see that. But uh, I also think that this game is, might be coming out in either, because it's already been rated by the ESRB. And uh, yeah, I could see it coming out in April or June. I was originally thinking it could come out like around July, like July 19th, I believe lands on a uh, Friday. And the reason why I said July 19th is because I it's July 22nd is, yeah, okay, yeah, it's on a Friday. So uh, July 22nd is the uh, release date for Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. And, uh, and I thought maybe trying to land it close to that Japanese release date would make, like, a perfect 20th anniversary, like, like almost the closest you could get for a 20th anniversary, like, exact date. Uh, to have that for, like, the 20th anniversary and it's to celebrate Thousand Year Door. And, like, now I think, now that the SRB rated it, I feel like it's closer. I feel like it's gotta be April or May or even June. So, I'm kind of thinking it's one of those two few months... I would hope it's either April or May, because that means a less wait time for this game, but it will probably be revealed in a Nintendo Direct next month. And it could, it, again, it could exact be a, a, an exact month for now. Uh, and, yeah, I'm going to go to Nintendo NY no matter what for this. For, the, like, just to see this release date and get all excited for it. Because I honestly can't wait. This is... Like, this is a game that I'm like, oh my god, time is going to slow down considerably the closer I get to this game. And, like, you know, like, time, like, because, like, time was going by fast, and now it feels like it's going by slower and slower each day because of this game being announced. <coughs> but, yeah. Uh, so, some closing thoughts. Uh, yeah. My one of my favorite games of all time being remade, and I'm really, really excited for it. I already have a whole video discussing about the remake, and I could go talk about it all day. Uh, you could go, guys could also comment down below your thoughts on the Thousand Year Door remake, uh, what you guys would like to see from it as well. And so, if you guys are also excited for it in general, uh, and also any other games on this list, and also the Switch 2 in general, like that as well. Uh, the speculation on that. So, yeah. Ah, oh, it's gonna be one crazy year for games. It's really, really exciting now. No matter what fan of system or, you know, company you are, uh, or if you're a PC gamer, it's gonna be really, really exciting for anybody of any genre. As you guys can see, this is mostly filled with, like, Nintendo and also some fighting games and also JRPGs. Uh, you got the whole shebang here. But, yeah, I am really excited for a lot of these games, and I cannot wait. 2024 has a lot in store for us, and yeah, this should be a really, really good year for gaming. If 2023 was really good, I feel like this is going to be carrying on some of that momentum. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching my 2024 hype video, and uh, yeah, hopefully now that the this uh, series of videos are done, we could get back to our regularly scheduled Super Paper Mario Let's Play. So yeah, thank you all for watching. Peace.